Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we wanted to take a look at the Renogy 72,000 milliamp hour, 266 watt hour high capacity power bank. It's listed on the Renogy store on Amazon as a 12 volt power bank with a 60 watt PD capability. CPAP battery for camping that would be out of the 12 volt 15 amp socket. USB-C. It's just labeled as a overall good monster power pack so we're gonna get it tested out and see what this thing can really handle we'll take a look at some of the specs real quick so it says that it's 72,000 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts i read a lot of reviews on this thing people saying that it doesn't have the rated capacity and they sent it back and they left a bad review you have to understand exactly what you're looking at here it is 3.7 volts at 72,000 milliamp hours. That's what the battery is rated at. You're not getting 3.7 volts out of any of these ports. You've got 12, you've got 5 volts, you've got 9 volts, 24 volts, 16 volts. So many different power options on here. 3.7 volts is not even an option. So that leads you, and you should know that, Inside there, they're using some type of buck converter or a step-up converter or some type of arrangement of electronics that boosts that 3.7 volts up to the voltage that you see here, 12 volts. And by the way, this is not regulated. So as the power depletes in the battery pack, this 12 volts nominal will be affected. Just be aware of that. Uh, not so much for the USB ports. They're kind of at 5 volts and they stay around, you know, 4.9 to 5 volts. Okay, we'll start right to left. This is the 12 volt 15 amp out, and this is non-regulated, so battery voltage again is going to affect this. Right here we got your DC and USB-C in and outputs, and they are listed at 18 to 24 volts, and DC 5. 9, 12, 15, and 20, respectively, all at 3 amps coming through here. This is a max amperage of 15. Then we have the USB A's here, which again is going to be 5 volts, 4.5 volts, 9 volts, or 12 volts at 4.5 amps, 5 amps, 2 amps, and 1.5 amps. And then over here you'll have your DC uh, outputs again at different levels all the way up to 27. So you have 27 watts here maximum and it says 60 watts maximum here. So there's a little conflicting data in there uh, between some of the things it lists. And that's why we went through the test to see exactly what you can get for this thing. Because some, some of the specs on here can be misleading and... Um, we want you to make sure that you get exactly what you're paying for. So up top, you've got a 10 watt wireless charging port that does fine. As you'll see in the videos coming up, we've tested all that. The net weight's about three and a half pounds or so. It's nine inches by four and a half inches wide by one and a half or 1.7 inches deep. So it is a little thick. You're not going to put it in your pocket. It comes with the power bank itself. A 40 watt AC wall charger. This thing can accept up to 80 watts solar input, which is huge for the power pack and why we got this thing to look at. Uh, Renogy says that it can, the internal charge controller can support up to 120 watts, 100 to 120 watts. And we do test it with a 120 watt solar panel as well. So. You also get the user manual. You get a DC to DC laptop cable, which is the same port size as this. And that also goes in turn to an eight piece laptop output set. This is the DC to DC cord. It's not very long. And it's your standard barrel connection there. And you also get a bunch of these DC adapters to different things. All different types of adapters. And this nice neoprene case. 
that also has a pocket in there. And it fits very tight onto this Renji power bank. Some other features, it's got a indicator of how much life is left, so they ship it with 50%. That's your green light to indicate that your charging pad is on. The 12 volt outlet socket is always hot. So you can just plug something directly into it. Again, the left button just activates the percentage meter on the battery and your um, wireless charging pad. This side can also activate the battery meter without turning on the uh, power ports. And, and th when this green light's on, the power ports are active as well on here. This is the only thing that's independent. This side allows you to select multiple different voltages so as you see there 12 volts lit up and let me adjust for you guys so you can see so there you see we have 12 volts lit up and 50 percent battery there is some bleed over between the led lights but you can definitively see if it's lit up you see how one two is lit up there and then you have a fade out on this side and a fade out on this side so the leds are going one two three four for the power side to indicate your charge level in 25 percent increments your power light to indicate if your usbs and your dc power is on as well as your charging pad the 12 volt is consistently hot now this voltage range here 12 16 5 20 24 that is for your DC out, and that's going to be able to charge your laptop and some CPAP devices. That's what this thing is marketed for. Well, if you have output voltage of 24, it's not going to power a 24-volt device plus. Because at 24 volts, you're going to be requiring some amperage, probably in the range of 2 to 3 amps, maybe 4 amps. And I believe when this thing is set, let's see... What the manufacturer states. Yeah, at 24 volts, you're only getting 2 amps out. So you need to check your power supply if you're using this DC side and see where your amperage falls in compared to where the chart is the manufacturer gives you. And that's, I think, again, where people are giving bad reviews. They're saying, hey, this DC power port ain't charging my CPAP. Well, yeah, if your CPAP runs 24 volts and this thing's only putting out 2 amps, and your CPAP machine requires 24 volts at 3 amps, 4 amps, 5 amps, it's not going to work. It's never going to work. You'll need to get the adapter that takes 12 volts DC and steps it up to 12 volts in, in the little converter box, which we'll show in a minute. And then you can run almost all your CPAP devices out of here because you'll be having an external uh, transformer in the little black boxes that you get, like the laptop chargers. And you're going to have some conversion loss, obviously, due to heat. But that's where I think a lot of these reviews are going wrong and saying, oh, this, this battery pack don't work or it don't power my CPAP is because the it's more than likely user error, in my opinion. So we'll take a look at this thing. And it's very rubberized. It's got a raised pad for the charging port here. It's got sealed spots where you can just push them in so I, they don't label this thing as waterproof but if this thing got splashed on i wouldn't cry it, and, and in the neoprene case it also uh, will protect it very well so if you see here we'll long hold activate 12 volts push it again 16.5 push it again 20 push it again 24 and you just It'll blink, and whatever you, whenever you plug it into whatever source it in, it'll get solid. And again, that's that DC cable port. And on the other side, there's a pretty big flashlight, so you would just hold the left button, I believe. Yep. And there it is. And then hold it to go off. You have a red mode. And then you double click to get the white flashlight. And you click again, it's bright. Click again, it's dim. And it's off. So the left button controls all of that.
All right, now we'll go into some video about each one of the ports, the features, and we'll come back and talk about it. All right, the neoprene case on this Renogy power bank is pretty good quality. It's actually really nice quality. It feels like it would be water resistant. It has a little belt um, hook there. It's Velcroed and it has a pouch that holds all of the accessories and you can use everything because it's right here in the front. So that's pretty nice. All right, we're now going to take a look at how the wireless charging pad does. I wanted to show that it will actually wireless charge through the neoprene case. Now there's no case on the phone, but it will still wireless charge through the actual neoprene case here, which is pretty cool. And it says fast wireless charging. So it will be doing yep, fast charging. All right, this is the USB-A output and the USB-C. And this is where we will be checking the milliamp capacity at five volts. Remember, this is a 3.7 volt, 72,000 milliamp hour. So we're gonna test it at the five volt output, which is the lowest output you can get. And we'll do that at a steady rate, around two amps. Uh, that's on the high end of, of devices, but we'll see exactly what the milliamp output is. All right, we're gonna test the milliamp output on this Renogy 72,000 milliamp hour battery pack. This is at five volts, so we don't expect to get 32,000 milliamp hour, or sorry, 72,000 milliamp hours. Expect to get quite a bit less, maybe around 50,000 or so. So we'll check the output here and see what we can get. The average on a USB output is gonna be about 2.4 amps for current standards. So we'll see what this can pull and we'll set it at an average of two amp draw. So we're gonna jump it up to one amp. So that's one amp. The one and a half amp. It's one and a half amps. We'll shoot up to two amps. And two amps is where we'll hold the test at. But let's continue to go up and see how far we can go. It's 2.5 amps. 2.75. three amps and get all the way up to 3.3 .3 amps there and then it starts to drain the battery too much so we'll back down and we'll keep it at a two amp draw which is on the high end of devices So we'll let it sit here and see how long it'll pull down two amps for. All right, as we can see here, the Renogy power pack lasted 22 hours and 49 minutes for a total of 45,574 milliamp hours or 227.39 watt hours. So not quite the 7200 they're claiming, but this was putting out at 5 volts, 2 amps. So it is pretty good. The battery is rated for 72,000 at 3.7 volts. So the math is there. It looks okay. We'll continue on testing this thing. Okay, we're going to take a look at the DC in and out and the USB-C in and out. These cannot be used simultaneously. It's either one or the other for charging or discharging, and you cannot use them both at the same time, says the manufacturer. All right, we have the USB-C hooked up to a computer, and we'll see if it can charge a computer. And as you can see, the battery charge icon came on right there. 
and it does say full and the screen brightness shot all the way up. I will unplug it so you can see. And it goes back down. So this will charge a USB-C computer all the way up to 60 watts, which is most computers. All right, I just wanted to show the gaming laptop hooked up to the DC output set at 20 volts because this takes an input of 19.5. As you see there, I just plugged it in and it is now charging. So if we look here, we're right there at 20 volts coming out of the DC port. And we are currently charging the laptop. Not the most efficient way to do it, but it will charge your laptops as long as you are 24 volts or less. All right, it's just after 9 a.m. We're out here with the Renogy 72,000 milliamp hour battery pack. As you can see, it's flat dead, it's blinking. We're gonna go ahead and hook the solar panels up to it and see what we get and see how long it takes to charge. All right, we've picked up charging now, as you can see. It is blinking there, just one light, so it's under 25%. And like I said, it's just after 9 o'clock, we're bringing in about 30 watts on this 120 watt panel. The max input for this is 80 watts, but this will take 100 to 120 watt panel, and the charge controller internally will step it down to 80 to protect everything. And you see there, we're already drawing 47 watts. So we'll come back and check it. They say about 4 hours to charge this thing to full. And that's pumping a full 80 watts the whole time. So we won't get that. So I assume between 4 to 6 hours we'll see this thing charged. Alright, we'll come back and check it. Alright, it's just shortly after 10 a.m. And if you see there, we've had 67.9 watts peak. 2.2 amp hours charged. 38.4 watt hours. We got 3.97 amps peak. We're bringing in 3.9 amps right now at 67 watts. And this Renogy can handle 80 watts. So it's doing pretty well. And if you see there, we are now blinking the third LED. So we started on the first one blinking. So it's showing between 50 and 75% now within an hour. Just let it keep going and see how long it really takes to charge all right it's just after 11 so this thing's been going about two hours there are some clouds passing overhead if you see there we had 78 watts peak so it is taking exactly what the manufacturer says right around 80 we've charged 65 watt hours we had a 4.57 amp peak 16 volts were the minimum voltage that we've seen and the watts peak was 78.7 so we're doing pretty good and we are still charging blinking third light two solid so between 50 and 75 percent and it's been two hours as you can see we just got over 80 watts 85 came in actually So yeah, we're putting right out about what the manufacturer states it can take. So there's 81 watts. So this thing's doing good. It does get a little warm. Not like super hot, but just warm. You can feel right around the charging board. So we'll come back and check in the next hour. I just wanted to get this. It is constantly pulling over 80 watts now. So it does charge at exactly what the manufacturer says. It actually goes a little over. So you are at 84 watts now. I think we've seen a peak of about 85 watts. Yeah, 85 watts peak. So this thing can handle, definitely can handle a 120 watt solar panel. That's what I have hooked to it right now, a foldable one. All right, it's just after 12 o'clock noon. So it's been going three hours. As you see there, we are 75 watts, 76 watts in. Six amp hours charged. 104 watt hours 5 amps was the peak that was the voltage minimum was 16.84 and we had a max wattage of 87 so 
this thing is can take more than what it says and if we look down here we are still charging with the third light blinking so we are within the one hour time limit where they said they said approximately three to four hours but we're not getting perfect 80 watts the whole time so i'm going to say between five and six hours to fully charge and we're at three now so we'll come back and check again all right we have hit the four hour mark it's just after 1 p.m we started at nine and we are blinking one last final dot so three solid onto the last one 144 watt hours peak amps for five minimum voltage 16.8 87 watts peak 8.5 amp hours charged and 145 watt hours so we'll let it go another hour and see and it's right within that window like they said so it's doing very well I right, were about four and a half hours in it seems to have some type of a smart controller in here because we are on the last LED blinking and it's blinking kind of slow kind of fast depending on the wattage and it seems like the wattage is varying and we are in full sunlight as you can see there's full sunlight on these panels so should be no reason why we shouldn't be putting out you know upwards of 80 watts or so so i believe that this thing is starting to trickle charge itself now so we'll let it keep going and see when that led stops blinking all right about 15 to 3 and it has slowed down substantially from charging and actually shut down so i believe it's fully charged now we'll see 168 watt hours so it's still charging a little bit but it's about topped off so the claims are right you know if you get 80 watts perfectly the whole time, yeah, it'll charge in about four or five hours. Right now we're running about nine to three. So six hours and it's almost fully charged. I think that uh, that concludes this part of the test. It's doing pretty well. All right, this thing definitely fully charged. It performed well. We'll look at the specs here. 171 watt hours in. 5 amps was the max. 16.87, that was from the solar panel voltage. 87 watts peak, so it says that this can handle 80. Put a 120 watt solar panel on here and did just fine. So everything's good, as you see. We have all four lights lit up. We had one blinking when we started, which was below 25%, so now this is 100%. So we'll go into some other tests now. Now we're going to take a look at the 12 volt 15 amp cigarette port output. It shows 12 volts 15 amps out. So we're going to go ahead and hook up this Coleman thermal electric cooler, the trusty Coleman. If you haven't seen the video on it, click the link above. It's pretty decent for the price. And this pulls about 5 amps constant. So let's hook it up and see what happens. All right, as we can see, I pushed the power button just to show that all the LEDs are lit up there, all four of them. The green light is on. And you can hear the fan for the Coleman cooler running. And then it is blowing out cool air. So it's running this thing just fine. That's 5 amps. Let's try something else. Okay, we got the Rode Pro little cookable lunchbox heater thing that heats up to 300 watts also if you haven't seen the video click the link above it's pretty decent and this Renogy pack is powering it you see it's on go ahead and oh yeah that's getting warm already wow that is definitely definitely warm so it is powering this little lunchbox pretty easily Oh yeah, that's pretty warm. 
All right, we'll try something else. And the lunchbox was 12 amps, 144 watts, so it was getting close to what the rated output was. But as you see, it, it handled it pretty fine. All right, we're going to try the Rode Pro, uh, Rode Pro electric frying pan. And I believe this thing is like 20 amps. Yeah, look at that. That's 20 amps. Oh, it's 20 amp fuse, I'm sorry. 13 amps, 180 watts. So this is getting close to the uh, the max there. Let's get it plugged in and see if it'll work. All right, and the light is on. Let's see if it will, if it's heating up. Oh, it is getting warm. That It's getting warm right here on this side. So, must be where the heating element starts. It's definitely getting warm. Yeah, that's hot. That's, that's too hot to touch right now. So, yeah, it can handle 13 amps pretty well as well. All right, this is the last test we're going to perform with the 12 volt out. So... If we can brew some coffee off it, that would be amazing. We'll see. Alright, we got the coffee maker plugged in. And as you can see, we have six cups going, which six cups in this is really like one man cup. So, we'll just go ahead and flick it on. And we will leave it and see if we can get that hot water to come out the other end. And it is brewing. Now we just ran hot water through it, but we'll see if it'll brew the entire six cups. All right, and there it is. This thing did boil, well, coffee brew all six cups. And it took 50% of the battery, it's hard to see. But it took 50% of the battery, so half the life it got a little warm. But yeah, so this thing definitely passes the 12 volt socket test. It can definitely brew you some coffee. Just wanted to add this in showing that it does actually power everything. It is warming up. As you can see, we got cell service and the hu uh, heat and humidity on. And it does just fine. You can hear the air shooting out and everything works just fine okay as we've seen in the test videos everything performs to spec the from the charging pad on top that charges through the neoprene case to the usbs you can get well over 2.4 amps out of the usb a the dc out the cigarette lighter port all of them were within Renogy specs. The uh, main thing I want to talk about now is the issue with the CPAP battery or CPAP devices. So we did do a test on a CPAP device. It was a ResMed Air 10. If you see here, that is, and this is the 90 watt AC adapter. So this is what uh, you would plug into the wall normally. And as you can see, it's got a DC output, right? So AC from the house in is going to be wherever part of the country you're in or world, 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, 1 to 1.5 amps. Then you have 115 at 400 hertz at 1.5 amps. So it takes a whole bunch of AC inputs. This box here converts it into DC, which most people don't understand is a lot of devices run on DC. AC is only used to push, to, uh, push the power out to the houses. Most of the time, if your device has a box like this or anything, look on the back. It'll always be a DC output. And then you see there, DC plus 24 volts at 3.75 amps. Well, we know from the instruction manual that this thing here is only going to supply on the DC out 24 volts, 2 amps. So this thing could never power the device out of the um dc port directly simply because there's not enough amperage we're short we're coming in at 1.75 amps less which is about 50 percent less amperage so the device is not even going to turn on um 
and that's why these connectors are so great is because basically you're going to be able to mimic what that transformer box is doing coming out of here as long as you meet the amperage specs so here i have the cigarette lighter adapter type and this is the box that charges for the ResMed. And the input is 12 to 24 volts at 12 amps max. So this thing here puts out 12 volts at 15 amps max, right? So we know that this thing here is basically this is capacitive. So, or maybe capacitive is not the right word. If you don't need the amperage, it's not going to pull it. So this thing could accept up to 12 amps max, but it does not need it. So I don't know how much this actually needs, but the output you see is 24 volts at 3.75 amps. Exactly what the charger matches on this. 24 at 3.75. So all you're essentially doing is mimicking the wall plug from the 12 volts instead of using 120 to 240. So that's why this thing's great. And to give you guys kind of an idea, if you're running the CPAP full power with the uh, radio signal on, meaning the, uh, the cell service to kind of report your data back, most new CPAPs have that. This CPAP had a maximum of uh, eight on the humidity. So we set it in the middle of four. And running it on specs like that, you're going to get about two days out of this thing. You know, you'll get a weekend. Maybe a, f a cell phone charge in there. Take off the cell service signal on the CPAP and you get an additional day. Take off the humidity and run it on bare minimum four to five days with charging your phone. So this thing does work. Now, if you're using a CPAP, you're going to want to use it with the humidity no matter what. Because that's what it's prescribed. So, using it with the humidity on the proper settings. Oh, by the way, I believe that setting was a ramp speed of 6 PSI up to 18. So, it was a broad range of air pressure to kind of give you that broad range spectrum of where it's going to perform 6 to 18. Uh, and again, obviously, it'll do more and it'll do less. But that's the test parameters we used. And we got about two days out of it. Running the CPAP full power like you were running it out of your wall in energy saving mode with no humidity, no heat, um, no cell service. This thing's running for four days to a week easily. So I think it's a great buy at the price. Click the link in the description. That helps the channel out at 159, 160 bucks. I don't think you can go wrong with this. So this was definitely a good buy. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.